Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. And I'm Peter with RowdyRoman.com. And today we're gonna be unboxing this giant 3D printer that's in this box. Huge. Any cubic Chiron. 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 We can't pronounce it right because it's spelled <laughs> weird. Chiron is uh, from Greek mythology. I'm gonna read this. In Greek mythology, it's one of the centaurs. He lived at the foot of Mount Pelion. And unlike other centaurs who were violent and savage, he was famous for his wisdom and knowledge of medicine. What that has to do with this printer, I have no idea, but let's open it up and take a look. All right, so first thing you'll notice is a lot of it is already assembled and they actually have a full roll of filament as opposed to a little string of a sample. So that yeah. is a really nice uh, add-on. It is PLA white at 1.75. Looks like this thing was broke at some point. We do have some sort of zip tie strap that does look broken. Although that's not a big deal because we can just zip tie that back together. Have some cellophane. Do you have this knife? So it looks oh, like they did yeah. zip tie everything uh, in place for shipping. So these zip ties are gonna be cut anyways. So that's a good thing. Okay, the top part is just fully assembled. The base this is gonna be a lot helpful if you have a second person, cause it is very, it's very large. Huge. You got it? I got it. All right. So we'll move that off to the side. Holy crap. The thing. <laughs> That's the biggest. Oh my... <laughs> Look at how big that is. That's insane. <laughs> okay. Pulling off the second piece of foam. Okay. We Here's have the... the gantry. The top part. That's pretty much fully assembled as well. Dual motors. Dual. You can't see it. Let's lay it this way. So here it is, this is what it looks like. It's all assembled and pre-wired. It's got the dual uh, Z motors. So we'll move that to the side. You have uh, more filament here. You have gloves, some cables, extruder. Yeah, an extra hot end, a full on hot end in there. They include a lot in here. Let's get to the packaging right now because there's nothing else in the box. Wow, you get a lot in this package. You get a lot of extra stuff that I was not expecting. Um, for example, some of the extras, even more filament in addition to the whole roll of filament you get there. You get a bunch of different colors. You get an extra hot end. Um, let's see. You get uh, extra V wheels, these tips. You get everything from a 0.4 to a 0.8 uh, tip. So that will allow you to print a lot faster on those big prints if you're not worried about resolution. Um, just the normal tools, spatula, you know, uh, Allen keys. Um, Let's see what the else the unbranded sd card that is a full-size card and it is eight gigabytes it does include their um driver software to connect to a computer via the cable and it does have a super old version of cura on it and some instructions english and chinese yep we also have that auto level device so we'll take a look at that at greater yep. detail this is the filament holder up here um, we did pass the AnyCubic inspection. Of course, would they really ever put a fail in one and just send it to you? So that's kind of funny. How does the instruction user manual look? Typically these it's, are garbage. It's thick. It's pretty thick, which is much thicker than most everything else. And it's got color pictures. The English is probably pretty good from yeah, what I'm reading over here. Yep. Yeah. So it it's a good. pretty valid... Uh, user manual in physical paper form, which is pretty nice when you're putting these things together. So that's what all comes in the packages. Now let's put the printer together. All right, here is the base, which is already just so ridiculous. So this table that we're working on is the table for my CNC. That's the full size 32 by 32. 
and this is like over half it's that huge. size. It is just gigantic to anything else that's been in my shop. So yep. first things first, what does it say? It says clip off the clip zip ties. Clip off the zip ties. We'll use the snippers that come with it and clip there the zip goes. tie. And then it says all the other packaging. This paper is used for manual bed leveling, is what this says on top of it. Optional. Can be used for manual bed leveling, so hang on to this and you may use it later. I think during installation, let's leave the clear plastic over the bed. Okay. That way in case we drop anything, we won't ruin the bed. It is a glass bed with a texture on it, very similar to my artillery. Uh, which is a really sticky surface and I can barely get prints off. So that is something that should be a benefit. So we'll snip off this one. Do we have any yeah, others? Yeah, we got more right here. A little zip tie right there. And then... Is this... Permanently here? That seems like an interesting place to put this. No, that doesn't Yeah, that's really going to come off for sure. That's just for packaging. Okay. So they have the screen attached here, I guess, for <laughs> shipping, which is directly in line with the bed. So you're going to be removing the two screws down here. And then it just rotates right to the side. It goes on this side, it goes right here? Yep. Okay, easy enough. You just gotta take out the screws and the bolts that come with it that go in line with the uh, track in the extrusion. Set it down. Does it say come all the way to the front? Yep. Okay. okay. And then we just tighten these back down. That is a structural piece. Go on the side. All right, so we got these two T plates now. They look like this. We're going to put them along the sides, and that will structurally help hold the whole uh, gantry part together. So you'll just put them in there, it'll be tight. You don't have to take the nuts off or anything and then just tighten it down. Once you get those T-plates on, we're gonna take the wires from the Z, we're gonna plug those into the side. Red goes in red, blue goes in blue. Couldn't be any simpler. Those are connected, we're done with that. I have wires over here to plug okay. in. On each side, we're going to have the wires for the Z motor. They are laying kind of right there. You can't miss them. So you'll just plug those in. Then you'll also have the Z limit switch wire that you'll have to plug in in the back. All right, finally, everything is plugged in and connected. We just have to make the filament holder so it will go somewhere on this side. There are two bolts that we will disconnect and then attach. Okay, so on the power supply, there is a switch underneath here. It says switch between 115 and 230. Make sure you change it. Mine is set to 230 and I'm in North America, so we're gonna change it. If you don't, you can ruin everything. 
So we just get a little, I'm gonna use one of the Allen wrenches, stick it in here on the switch and switch it to 115. Okay, from there on out, do we have anything else going on in the instruction booklet? It just says install filament. Install filament. Okay, so we're gonna take <clears> the <throat> clear plastic off of the bed. It is weird that uh, the it's not insulated. It is that. weird that it's not insulated. I agree with you. It does have these little metal clips that are holding the bed on. So, man. That is one thick piece of glass. It is too. a thick piece of glass. It is really big, but there is a, this power supply is huge. It Probably is. Probably twice as big as any other power supply. Yeah. So, it should be able to power and heat this up pretty well. So, let's get the power plug. Plug it in. And then let's bring you in close to see the screen the first time we power it on. All right, so we're plugging it in. And then we'll hit the power. <laughs> it plays a nice little sound. It booted up. That booted up really fast. It says tools. Tools, setup, print. We see um, the print head temperature. We see the bed temperature. We have any cubic and then ready. Those are not buttons. When I am touching it, you can hear it's got a uh, button to touch or it's got a sound when you touch the buttons. Let's hit tools. We have home the machine. We can move the axis, preheat, cooling, filament, reset, more, and back button. So let's hit more. We have level help and info. We can see the info. Our firmware is version 1.3.0. The build volume is 400 by 400 by 450. Nozzle diameter that we have in there right now is 0.4. And um, it gives us other information. Setup. We have English to Chinese, temperature, motors, status, and speed. Status just tells us the files, the print rate, what all is going on right now on the machine. We have print and resume as well. And then in print, we have no SD card, so it's showing nothing. What's really nice is on the side, it has a full SD card. So where is that SD card that came with it? It's over there. There it's over to it right. is, it's over here. Right so we're gonna plug that in. <clears throat> It goes in upside down, I think. It goes in upside down. It just now said menu print. We'll go back and go back into print. And now we have three different things on here. We have auto leveling, level test, and manual leveling, leveling G code. We're gonna go back. Right now we're gonna go to setup. <clears throat> we're gonna go to tools, filament. Filament. And then it says filament, filament in. in. So we'll hit filament in. Cold extrusion prevented, auto heating on. Hit OK, yep. Hit OK, and it's gonna low, uh, change the extruder temperature to 230 degrees Celsius. And you can see it's getting there pretty quick. All right, so we're at 189. Goes that way. Gotta make sure that these cords aren't hooked around the filament there. I, I don't know how that's supposed to go for sure, but that's awfully close. We might actually want to move that all the way back. I think, yeah, you might be right. That is directly in line. I think we have to. All right, we've just hit 229. We're waiting for 230. Let me zoom in on the process of loading the filament. All right, so we have the filament sensor right here. You gotta go through that first. We'll push it through there so it knows there's filament. You pull this lever and then you stick it into the extruder motor. And then you'll shove it through and then we'll make sure it's coming out the hot end. Mm. 
We just hit 230. We're going between 230, 239. We have, it's coming out. You're balling it up perfectly right now. So that's loading the filament. You can see we've extruded the filament out there. Now we're gonna go into the controller here. It says hit filament in again. We're gonna hit filament in again. You might wanna raise the Z. Yeah, we're gonna stop. We need to raise the Z. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna do axis. axis. We're gonna do Z. We're gonna do Z plus uh, one. Let's do it 10. They do it a little differently. We have 10, 1, and 1 on the right side are the pluses. And then 10, 1, and 0.1 on the left side are the minuses. And we can change the speed from high to slow. So we're going to go up again. Get that extruder head farther away. And then we'll go back into filament. And we'll do filament in again. So we'll just load more filament. And we'll just make sure that filament is flowing through pretty nicely. It looks like it's flowing through really nice. And typically this filament is garbage that comes with a printer, but we'll see how it goes. And I think it's just gonna keep going and going until we hit stop. So I'm gonna hit stop. All right, one and second. Where's the little flashlight? It's one. just oozing out. There it is. Oh, I wanna know what head is on there. I'm assuming it's a point 0.2. I'm fairly certain it's point 0.4. That's typically... Point 0.4, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, point 0.4. Okay. So ours did come with a point 0.4 head inside it, so... All right, so we got that done. Now we need to do some bed leveling. Okay, so we're into the very first print we've ever done on this thing. It is yeah. the bed leveling test. We just manually bed leveled, not to any specs, just kind of close. And I think we're good enough to go ahead and print on this. Although, yeah. of course, we're gonna dial it in. Yeah. And our belt for the x-axis is really loose. It's super loose. It needs to be tightened. So we got a lot of a little bit, little bit of things to do. But for our first print, we're doing really good. Um, it is hot. There's a lot of surface area yeah. getting hot, so if you hold your hands above it, it is gonna heat up the room that it's in, wherever yeah. it's in, pretty quickly. So I'm imagining it's drawing a lot of power to heat up that bed. Well, Although, you also gotta think about like if you ever wanna print an ABS. It's yeah, like it, it'll, it'll definitely keep the room ambient will, enough to print yeah. an ABS. It is kind of loud. The normal stepper, stepper drivers are not silent. No. They do have the option to unplug, like it's as simple as pulling them out and yep. putting them back in, new pins. So you could get some that were silent. Mm -hmm. um, it is sort of slow, but you were expecting it to be way uh, slower. Yeah, I was expecting it to be real slow. Although, can you imagine this thing printing a cylinder all the way up to the top at this size? You're gonna be taking- A week. At least a week to print that, and I don't, I don't have, and how many rolls of filament, I don't know. I don't know. That's why they include all of the other tips. Yeah. With something this big, you're gonna wanna go to a bigger tip. I have never done it. Have you ever had no. a bigger tip? No. We've always stuck with a standard 0.4. So it's gonna be really interesting switching over to 0.8, which is double the size of normal. And uh, it should go a lot faster. Yeah. So right now we're just gonna let it run. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the probe, kind of fine tune that. And then we'll print, <laughs> ironically, let's print a really tiny XYZ cube yeah. in the center so we can print that out and check out yeah. how it looks. I have another one off my Prusa and we can kind of compare those two. So we'll just let this run, finish it up, tune it in, and then print a cube.
All right, so here is the Z cube that we did. You can see there is some banding going across there. It's going across all the X, Y, and X, which is interesting. The Z looks fine. It is over extruding just a little bit. You can see up there. But it is a pretty decent print for not messing with it all. It's literally the first print with nothing else going on. So, and it's the filament that came with it. So, pretty happy with that print. So you can kind of see the printers that I have. The Prusa Mini, which is really small, is dwarfing yeah. compared to the big one. You could literally print a Prusa Mini within there. Yep. Here's my Prusa i3 MK3S alongside of it. It also looks like a Prusa Mini compared to this thing. I mean, this thing is massive. So I just wanted to give you some scale of how big this printer is. Like, we were going to print uh, just a test print of just a solid square along the bottom to see, you know, the evenness. It was going to take two hour, two and a half hours for two layers, just a solid block. Just two layers thick. Just two layers, yeah. So you're not printing anything quick. If you're printing something solid, it's gonna take you many, many days. <laughs> yeah. uh, so here's some video of it printing a bunch of different objects that Pete's gonna print at his house. And take a look. <clears throat> All right, so it's not a silent printer. It no. definitely had some sound to it. Pretty mm -hmm. like a normal Ender 3 would have without the silent board. It doesn't mean it's loud, it's just not silent. Even if you got the silent board, your fan, was it in the power supply or on the end? Huh? No, it was the power the supply. The power supply, you're gonna hear the power supply. Because the power supply is huge. It's huge, so it's gotta cool that thing. So yeah, you will hear the power supply. Um, you do want to make sure that your filament is back because it could get caught on these wires mm -hmm. over here that go up and down. Um, what else do we have? It Cooling down takes longer than actually heating up yeah. on the bed. Um, so when you're ready to be done with the print, you're not going to yeah. take it off really fast. Because the glass is, I don't know, maybe three, four millimeters thick. It's, it's, it's thick. thick. So it takes a while to cool down. One bummer of it on the screen is when you want to move everything up and down. You have a 10, 1, and point, point 0.1, I think. Something like that, yeah. Something like that to be able to move, but you can't hold your finger on it to make it move in succession. So you, if you want to move it like I did from the bottom to the very top, you're going to be hitting it a zillion times. Kind of like first world problem, but still, that's kind of a bummer. I wish they could override that in the firmware. It does have a filament sensor back here. Yep. So when filament goes through and runs out, it will stop the print and try to print uh, after you fill it up with filament. Their bed leveling was a little tricky. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't hard, but we have done it on many printers. If this is your first printer, bed leveling yeah. is gonna be tricky. Well, part of it, the printers or other printers that we've done it, you could literally do five points manually and you'd be fine. 
Because you're so small. Yeah. This thing it's is so, so big yeah. that manualing. It, it does 25 probing. different points. Yeah. That you can manu you can manually adjust. I do like want. the manual adjustment for the probing um, with the touch probe. Mm -hmm. We can adjust every little different part. So you're gonna get a perfect bed. It's just gonna take you all day to do that. Yeah. And then once you move it, you're probably gonna have to do it again. Yeah. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, other than that. Everything is pretty standard. We did tighten up the belt up here and down below. This yep. one was weird. We had to work with this thing on the end and there's no adjustment for that. It was just two men manhandling, squeezing the belt really tight. Yeah. The bottom is a lot easier to adjust. Yeah. It's got these it's still, locks. It still required two people. So, yeah, you're gonna use two people when you do it, but that's just part of it. On the back Z, uh, Y stepper, it does have a motor dampener. None of the other motors do. Yeah. It's kind of odd because you're hearing it. Maybe that one's louder without a dampener. I put that on the Ender 3 before. They had the silent board and it did quiet it, but a silent board, the drivers oh. make a world of difference. Yep. So that's what's up. I really, really like having a full-size SD full size. card. That makes a huge difference of putting it in and out way easier. And Cura, the main thing, Cura, it's only as good, I guess the printer is only good as the slicer. Yep. Cura has this built into it, so you're not looking for profiles and blah, blah, blah. If you're advanced, you may edit it, but if you're a beginner and this is a first firmware, you download Cura, you get your 3D file, you download Cura, and this uh, Cura tells the machine how to turn that into an actual printed part. It slices it into layers. And that's already built into Cura, so that makes this mm -hmm. even easier. Uh, beginner friendly, what would you rate this on a scale of one to 10? I mean, we were printing. The longest thing was the bed leveling and I could, if I was the first time doing it, I think I would get a little annoyed with it. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I mean, for such a big printer and I think it's listed at $430. Right now it's on sale for 30. I think 499 is typical. Uh, would you say? Yeah. I'd give it like a, a seven, and that's only because of the bed leveling. It's not as easy yeah. as it could be. But assembly is a nine and a half. There yeah, was no, there, there was, was not nothing. A, no to problems. It. No problems with that, that. Which is wonderful. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. I think a seven is just because of the bed leveling. It may be a little low, actually. It may be an eight, but because of the bed yeah. leveling, if you take the bed leveling out, ease of use and everything else would probably be like a nine and a half again. Yeah. Just bed leveling is kind of odd. So that's. Pretty much it. Anything else you can think of on this printer that stood out to you? No, I mean, if you're thinking about buying this for like the first time or as a first time printer, I mean, you could print so much. We were talking about actually printing diagonally like a breastplate for of armor. Yeah, you know? 22 inches diagonally you could fit, yep. which is huge. That is a Massive. Uh, normal size person's chest to fit. It's crazy. So I... I I would say if you're looking at this to buy, it is 100% a buy. Yeah. Uh, the quality is pretty decent. You'll see some other things. Pete uh, back was showing some quality. The quality is good. I think the quality is just a tad below my artillery sidewinder. Yeah. That thing I would agree. prints so well off the bat. Yep. But it's still 100 by 100 by uh, 100, smaller than this, this yeah. printer which is crazy. Yep. It's a hundred millimeters smaller. All hundred millimeters all the way around smaller. So you sacrifice a little bit of quality for um, mm -hmm. print size. Yep. Now, of course we didn't mess with any of the slicer settings. It's just defaulted whatever it was and boom, uh, it printed. So, yeah. and we did just print the cube at least in this white yep. crappy mm -hmm. filament that, that usually comes with it. Um, so We'll go back, check Pete's assessment of the other prints that he's done that take a lot longer. So uh, for me, it's definitely a buy. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I would buy. totally buy it. Four, buy it at regular price, four ninety nine. dollars Yeah. Yep. I would say me so. Too. Just because of the versatility of the size. The size alone, and my goodness, this bed is sticky. You don't have to worry about anything not sticking you have to worry about getting it off yeah <laughs> really that's... you gotta wait till the bed cools yeah to get you it off. do not use your fingers use the spatula the amount of stuff they include yeah is crazy it's worth it I, yeah for sure it's worth so it. it's a buy from us it's fantastic and i'm really thinking about printing darth helmet 
or dark helmet on this thing. Just you could put your whole head in there. It's from crazy. Space balls. From space balls, exactly. <laughs> uh, it would fit on this yeah, thing. It totally would. So super cool. Well, if you want to check this out, uh, you want to buy it, I have the links down below. You can check that out in the description. Uh, if you like this video, hit thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, happy printing.